Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to upgrade the CPU and RAM in my QNAP TS870 NAS. Because, well, why not? Almost two years ago, I bought this QNAP TS870 NAS to store most of my files on. It's been great as I can centrally access files anywhere on my network at home. By default, the NAS came installed with an Intel Celeron G1620 CPU at 2.7GHz, with two CPU cores and no hyperthreading. There's also a single 2GB stick of DDR3 RAM at 1333MHz. While these basic specs have been alright, and I honestly haven't noticed any performance issues, I wanted to try some simple upgrades that would help in speeding things up for years to come. First we'll look at the CPU. This particular NAS uses the Intel Socket 1155, so I could essentially get any CPU that would fit this to replace the low tier Celeron. As this socket is end of life, I had to look on eBay through different 3000 series i3, i5 and i7 CPUs, particularly T and S series chips. CPUs ending in S have a peak TDP of 65 watts, while CPUs ending in T have a peak TDP of 35 or 45 watts. This is mainly for power efficiency, and as is typically a low power device and as I leave it running 24-7 and the CPU is cooled by a passive system, a chip with low TDP is definitely preferable. In the end, I found an i5-3470S for $110 Australian in my area so I could cut down on chipping. This is a 4-core CPU at 2.9GHz and can turbo up to 3.6GHz with a 65W TDP. There's no hyperthreading available here, however I decided that it should be fine as we're still doubling the total core count from the stock CPU and increasing the speed. While the maximum power draw is a little higher than I'd have liked, it's only 10 watts higher than the original chip so it should be fine with the stock cooling system. In regards to memory, there are two RAM slots available, with only one of them in use with a 2GB stick. This model of NAS supports up to 16GB of RAM, so I bought two 8GB sticks of SODIMP memory at 1600MHz for around 100 Australian dollars, so 8 times the amount of RAM and slightly faster. Now I'll walk you through what's involved in the upgrade process. Keep in mind that this will void your warranty. The tools I used were a few different sizes of Phillips head screwdriver, as well as a permanent marker so that I could mark cables. Before starting, make sure that you have unplugged the NAS from the power. I'll also note that there is a lot of sharp metal inside, so be careful when you're poking around. So to begin with, we basically want to take off the case of the NAS, and to do this you just need to unscrew the six screws all around the outsides of the casing. After this, I did actually have a bit of trouble popping the case off, so I used a flathead screwdriver to pry around the edges until it basically clicked up and I was able to slide the whole thing off. After this, I start using a permanent marker to start marking some of the cables so that I can plug them back in when reassembling. Next, I start taking some of the screws out of the back, namely those around the power supply and network adapter card. After this, I start taking out the rest of the screws from the back, with the exception of the screws that are holding the fans in. There's also three screws underneath the NAS, so don't forget about those. And there's also one on the bottom on each side. Next, I take out the network adapter card, and unplug the fans while I'm at it. At this point I remove the tiny screw which is between the two audio jacks and there's also a hidden screw behind one of the stickers. Once all those screws are out you should be able to just pop off the back. Next I start taking the screws out from the power supply as that's pretty in the center and in the way so I want to move that out of the way if possible. At this point I realize that I'm going to need to move the hard drive back plane out because it's plugging directly into the main board. And in order to do this, I need to take out the discs. I probably should have done this at the start, and I'd recommend taking them out from the start if you're going through with this upgrade. You don't really want to have those discs in the NAS while you're moving it around and working on it. Once the hard drives are out, I take the cables out from the power supply, which are plugging into the hard drive backplane and mainboard. Next, I start unscrewing some of the screws, which are holding the CPU cooler on the mainboard for the CPU to the actual case of the NAS itself. A bunch of these screws also hold the hard drive backplane in place, which I need to try and get out of the way so that I can detach it from the mainboard. This is one of the parts that will void your warranty. There's a warranty sticker covering one of the screws on the back of the mainboard. So I basically just move that out of the way and then unscrew the four screws which are holding that board in place. There's also a sheet of plastic on the back which looks like it's doing a pretty good job at covering it from dust, so I clean that off and use it again when I reassemble to keep dust off the mainboard. Once the mainboard is unscrewed, I'm not really able to move it out of the way, 
as the hard drive backplane is still inserted into the mainboard. So in order to get this out, I need to unscrew it further so that I can try and slide it outwards. I had to use a longer than average screwdriver in order to actually reach the screws as they were in a bit of a weird position, but after that it slid out pretty easily. Once disconnected, I just had to move the back of the NAS case and with the fans out of the way, and then I was able to move the main board out. Once I had the board out, there was this single ribbon cable that was plugged into the NAS. It had a couple of melted plastic pieces holding it in place, so I simply scratched these off with my fingers, and then I'm able to remove the ribbon cable and completely detach the main board from the body of the NAS, so that I can start working on it. Once I've got the mainboard completely removed, the first thing I do is take out that 2GB stick of RAM. Once this is done, I open up the two 8GB sticks I bought and put those into the slots. And that's basically all there is for the RAM upgrade. Now for the CPU upgrade. I start by unscrewing the screws of the heatsink from the mainboard so that I can completely remove that heatsink and get to the CPU. Once I've removed the heatsink, I clear the thermal paste off, and then open the CPU socket and take out the old CPU. After that, I get the new CPU, put it in the socket, and then I start to apply my thermal paste. I probably should have closed the socket first before applying the thermal paste, but I don't think it really matters too much. After the thermal paste has been applied, I close the socket, and then get the CPU heatsink and begin screwing it back evenly into the board. And that's basically all there is to it, the RAM and CPU upgrade are now complete, so all that's left to do is reassemble the NAS, which is basically the reverse process of what I just said. So this will begin with attaching that ribbon cable back to the mainboard, and then gently sliding the mainboard back into its original position. After this, I slide the hard drive backplane back in, attach the cables, and then screw the mainboard back into the body of the NAS. After this, it's just a case of putting all the screws back in, reattaching the network expansion card, and screwing the power supply back into place. Then you just want to screw the back of the case into the body of the NAS. Once it's all screwed back together, you should be able to put the case of the NAS back on and then screw that into place. At this point, I put my hard drives back in, in the same order that I took them out, and then I put the three screws back into the bottom of the NAS. So that's all there is to it. The whole thing took me a little over an hour. After reassembling the NAS, of course I had one screw left over. Oops. So now that the upgrade's complete, let's take a look at some of the before and after benchmarks to see what the changes actually did. Upon logging into the web interface of the NAS, we can see that the new hardware was correctly detected. The first test I ran was to transcode a 105 megabyte video file from 1080p to 240p, 360p, 480p, and 720p. Before the upgrade, on the stock CPU, this took 2 minutes and 23 seconds to complete. After the upgrading, transcoding the same file took just 45 seconds thanks to the better performing CPU. I used HDPalm with the uppercase dash T flag, which works with cache to get an idea of the read speeds of memory. Before the upgrade, I got around 6.5 gigabytes per second, and after I got about 25 gigabytes per second, confirming the new memory is helping out here. Next I mounted one gigabyte of RAM and wrote data to it to get an idea of the write speeds. We can see here that after the upgrade, the amount of time taken to write a one gigabyte file is almost twice as fast, going from around 600 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds. I also performed some basic hashing tests by hashing the same data as MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, and SHA-512. The results are a little faster here, showing the increased single-threaded performance of the upgraded CPU. The upgraded CPU also has AES-NI instructions, which essentially speed up AES encryption operations at the hardware level rather than depending on software to take care of it. I'm looking to encrypt the whole NAS in the future, so this functionality will definitely be put to good use, and I have therefore run some basic encryption benchmarks. As we can see here, the after results in all of these AES tests are higher with the new CPU as expected. In some tests the difference was not too much, while in others it was more than 5 times faster. I found that the temperatures were a little better with the new CPU. Under full load, the Celeron CPU was sitting around 51 degrees Celsius, while the upgraded CPU was sitting at 48 degrees Celsius during the same tests. The temperature of the room I was testing in was around 22 degrees Celsius at the time during both tests. The idle temperature both before and after the upgrade was around 46 degrees Celsius. So that's basically it. We can see that the upgrades have improved things, though admittedly this probably won't have too many noticeable real-world improvements for me. I've been considering upgrading the network to 10 gigabit, however, after running a local storage benchmark on the NAS directly and not over the network, I'm only getting around 120 megabytes per second write speed anyway. 
anyway, which isn't much more than gigabit speeds, so this wouldn't really be worth it unless I'm using SSD storage or caching. It's not currently practical to replace the disks with SSDs, and I don't really want to have to use a whole bay for a cache drive either, as I'd prefer to have mass storage instead. Also, the costs associated with installing a 10 gigabit NIC in the NAS and my PC are pretty high. Due to these reasons, 10 gigabit is on hold, at least for now. In future, I might also look at replacing the fans with something a bit better and quieter. Stock fans run at 600 RPM while idling and are a little too audible for my liking. So as shown, it's not too difficult to get into the NAS and perform these upgrades. It's essentially a small low-end server or PC when it comes down to the components and replacing them. I liked that it wasn't locked down and I could actually get in there and perform these upgrades if I want to. Sure, it'll void the warranty, but it's a good optional way to increase the power of your NAS if you need it. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and comment if you have any questions or feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe for future videos like this one.